Hi, my name is Michelle Beering. I'm a sonographer at St. Anthony's Medical Center. Today I have with us Janetta Murphy. She's one of our nurses to talk about how to draw up and administer contrast. And what we've done so far is to take the contrast agent out of the refrigerator. There's two different ways to prepare the contrast depending upon which agent. One is just to simply roll it between your hands and resuspend it so that it will look more like the shade of milk. Another one with the other type of contrast agent is to put it in the contrast shaker. So we've already done that with these three. And as you can see, we've also already vented the contrast agent. And by that we mean that we've just put the uh, needle through there. What that does is ensure that we don't inject too much air or any air um, into the vial and that way we don't destroy the microbubbles inside. So Jeanette is going to talk with us today about the three different methods of kind of a bolus and dilution. So the first way um, that you can administer the contrast is to just, um, through an IV bolus, you just simply pull it up, all of the contents out of the, the vial and um, administer 0.2 to 0.5 um, cc's and then give a slow flush. So this is one of the more common types with just a straight bolus. Um, and when we administer it, we administer it slowly. Um, this ensures us that we can see the cavity opacification. As we administer it slowly, that will help prevent any attenuation that we would see. So one of the other ways that we can um, also administer is a one-to-one. -one, and we use this pretty often here. We do. This is actually our, our uh, preference, if you will. It's a, about one and a half cc's of contrast and one and a half cc's of saline. The benefit of this is it helps to reduce the amount of attenuation that we see on the picture, but still allows us to have really nice cavity opacification and endocardial water definition. Now you'll notice that Janetta first pulled up the saline and then um, is simply pulling up the other uh, one and a half to one cc of contrast so that we, in the end, have one to one dilution. Now the dosing that we'll use on this is about 0.5 cc's. And again, you can appreciate we also have the flush here so that we'll flush both the bolus and then this one-to-one -one dilution um, after we give that initial 0.5 dose. And then um, the last way is just simply um, one vial with 10 cc's of normal saline. The, this is a really easy method and the benefit of this method is that instead of using uh, the contrast and then flushing it, we'll kind of all have it in one place so that when we give the dosing on this, it'll be about one cc of contrast dilution that we would give and we don't necessarily need to flush it with the, um, with the saline afterwards. Um, it does still give us good cavity opacification and just depending upon the methods of administration, um, things like ejection fraction and heart rate, um, as you have a lower ejection fraction, you'll have to flush a little bit faster and or, and or maybe give a little bit more. And that's also the case in patients who are bradycardic. So if they have a low heart rate, um, we might go ahead and use a little bit more um, and inject a little bit faster. That will help make sure that we get that good cavity opacification all the way up to the apex. Um, during debutamines, we also use typically a one-to-one -one dilution or stress echoes, a one-to-one -one dilution, and then just give small aliquots in those repeat dosing but we know that when we give, give it during debutamine stress testing, um, we end up giving a little bit less. So we'll start off at maybe 0.5, but then only redose at 0.2. And the benefit of that is that since you have such a high heart rate, you don't need to give as much and you'll still be able to get nice cavity opacification. Thanks so much.